One director who I think is exceptional in his handling of distance is Ulrich Seidel, mm -hmm. the director of Rimini. Seidel, yeah. Ulrich Seidel, we actually did a special, Shout out. We, we, we don't do enough uh, kind of callbacks. We actually did a whole special on Ulrich Seidel where we spoke. One thing podcasts are never uh, accused of is referring to their own podcast yeah, yeah. and callback into their own podcast. <laughs> Animal, <laughs> yeah. Entrails. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> the backstory. Uh, we reviewed Animal Love and uh, The Real Young Men and Paradise, Paradise Love, Love and yeah. then a few others sort of in here and there. Um, I've I love Eric Seidel's documentary work, uh, and I'm sort of mixed on his fiction stuff. I thought Import Export was a bit one of the worst films mm. I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, terrible. Um, a bit. Uh, I want. I would like to rewatch it in the context of some like you know. I feel like when I first saw it, I hadn't really. I wasn't really on board with the Seidel project. Um, but yes, it, it's kind of abject in a in a in a rather sort of um, prurient, sort of oddly uh, accessible way. Rimini, however. <laughs> Manages to do things which on paper seem quite similar to import-export, but has an extraordinary grace, an extraordinary compassion and, and, and uh, restraint. Um, it, it's a film, just briefly for, for listeners, it's mm. a film about a, uh, a sort of uh, bingo hall singer. He's a schlager singer. A schlager singer. Can you yeah. explain what schlager is? So schlager is, is a kind of um, uh, abject, trashy form of uh, German chanson, which was introduced in the 50s to uh, uh, placate the... Um, the guilt of <laughs> uh, <laughs> the yeah. the schuld of um, a particular generation of Germans by listening to the most uh, kind of uh, banal and empty um, Love crooners yeah. essentially, yeah. and uh, it persists uh, particularly in Eastern Germany and in resorts like Rimini, which is yeah. where this film is set. And there are people still alive who who are who are the target audience. For yeah, us. and mm. for um, English, this is Rimini is kind of like uh, Magaluf. Okay. Oh, or Costa Costa del Sol. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's and Germans sport. have a relationship to it. Yeah, it's, it's the German. It's yeah, the yeah, German yeah, yeah. Magaluf. Yeah. Um, and so this guy has a flat in Rimini, and he does uh, seasons of uh, gigs in various different uh, locations, full of old people. He also uh, is a male prostitute. He 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 uh, has sex with older women um, for money, and uh, he. Um, and Sorry, no, not prostitutes, sex Volker. Sex Volker. <laughs> <laughs> Indian Volker. Indian Volker. <laughs> <That's a laughs> we'll talk more about that later. Um, yeah, so he's this guy, he's, 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 a, he's becoming a bit schlubby, but he's still got this kind of, uh, this sort of uh, cheeky boyish glamour. Kind of magnetism, um, yeah. A young woman appears at one of his gigs uh, with a sort of scowl on her face, and it turns out to be his uh, long-lost daughter, who is demanding money and, and love, really. Mm. Uh, but she isn't. Uh, in that order. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> in that order. Uh, and she, but she is, uh, there's a certain sort of ambivalence about her, a certain sort of push-pull, which I thought was very well played. Um, but yes, this film, it, it, it combines for me many different elements of Seidel's filmography. It, com it has um, uh, this, this, fixa this documentary-like fixation on need. There are various sort of like quite uh, raw depictions of people's sort of desperate needs in action in terms of these quite erotic quite beautiful scenes of him fucking these old women but also um the uh the the more trans the so import export depicts lots of global lines of global transit uh, transactions between you know m migrants being put in a, in and out um hence the title and and yeah i, I thought Rimini captures that alienation of mm. um different spaces being financially useful for different types of people and, and mm -hmm, categories mm -hmm. of people without a kind of discourse about it, without the sort of urban Usland, ho oh, ho, isn't it like this? Uh, how, you know, don't you feel bad about it? Mm. Way. Um, it wasn't exploitation. It, it was just like, oh, this is how it is. Yeah. And people experience pleasure in it and people mm. experience pain in it. And we're just going to look at that mm. for a bit. Yeah. I mean, it's got, in some ways it's got, uh, a strong aspect of like a Peter Kay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> did, not, did not remind Phoenix you Knights, Phoenix Knights. Phoenix Knights, yeah, right. it does, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. Um, uh, the central performance from, I don't know, actor's title, but he looks like the Richie he's Bravo is the, the Austrian yeah. Mickey Rourke, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> melted Rourke, basically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he looks like a melted uh, waxwork figure of a kind of younger, more handsome actor mm. um, parading around in this palatial. Uh, disc and jacket or well, which which kind of really echoes that we talked about you mentioned flat earlier it's not so much a flat as a kind of uh, schmaltzy villa it's this this mm -hmm. kind of like yeah, very true. cheapy double uh, cardboard cutouts of himself mm -hmm. as a younger man yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And he, great yeah. world building as we as yeah. said and he takes that with him wherever he goes so there's the spaces that he moves through which is Rimini in 
winter and winter becomes this first foggy and then is beset by snow. Uh, so we're seeing these kind of seasonal changes as well. And so he often walks through the fog in these absurdly opulent, Beautifully increasingly constructed decaying. as well. The, color, yeah. the, the spots of color, it's like mm. red desert, these kind of wide yep. shots, very textural. Well, it's very funny like red desert, you mentioned yeah. Antonio, because you know, the, other, the other great reference point, which I was thinking about watching this, was obviously Laventura. And there's mm. segments of Laventura where the lovers go to ghost towns in, yeah. you know, on the Italian western coast, I believe it is. And obviously the, the context there is that Mussolini built or began to build, like not only the EUR district in Rome, but built all these kind of basically new towns in various parts of Italy, which were never really fully inhabited. Um, and so there's this kind of, yeah, ambient reference to these kind of decayed, never really resident spaces. And that's exactly what we see evoked here, which is the, ho the it's an off season, basically. Yeah. When we get there, most of the hotels are shut. He, uh, I think the a couple of main hotels, so the people who are being bussed out to see him are not on a, a, a holiday of, of pleasure I imagine it's unusual timing that they're obviously retirees but they're choosing to go out in the winter months I don't know whether it's specifically to see I think maybe a lot of people just retire there in homes maybe no they, they, they're bust in on coaches think, okay. yeah there's a captive audience yeah they're, yeah and, and they are temporary in the sense that the characters in import expert are often temporarily resident yeah. in the spaces they're in yeah. but where in that case I mean it was like an editorial come to life that film yeah, yeah. So yeah. had all uh, here Ralph, you were complaining that you uh, felt the finale was you know, lacking in uh, subtlety. But um, for me, one of Seidel's great strengths is that he's, um, he's not a filmmaker of subtlety. I mean, <laughs> no, it, for one thing, let's talk about it. We haven't really spoken about it, but his fixation on symmetry in the shots. Yes. Um, the Where's the <laughs> Yeah, he's a bit like Kubrick almost in mm. this in this right, right, right. But um in and so it's in parts of the Paradise trilogy it starts to feel a little bit like a self-parody because mm. it's you know um uh, let's think about the other great filmmakers of uh it's a wasp in my marathon. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I've already drunk some Don't of it. Don't tell the waiter though. Charge that shot. Out. Shot of that as the uh <laughs> that's the podcast <laughs> image. Um <laughs> No, so so I thought you wanted but Wes Anderson of course is the other great contemporary Wasp filmmaker of uh symmetrical shot composition yeah. um, and at his worst or most obvious uh, Seidel seems kind of somehow open for mimicry he does lift way, the camera off the tripod there yeah so his fiction you know. works different because you get this kind of more roaming mobile it's a very good mixture of yeah. the kind of floaty uh, um, handheld vibe of close and then the mm. stark he manages and he you just he's just at the top of his game like in terms yep. of formally like he manages to go punch in and punch out at yeah. exactly the right moment there wasn't a single false no, move in there's that no thing. flab it's yeah, yeah. It, it, which is ironic because <laughs> <the Brahms. laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a lot of flab on display yeah. but like um, it's a lean, lean lean I think so I mean obviously he's he's a poet of intimacy and often quite you know unseen intimacies you know here between elderly people i say elderly you know retire re-age people whose bodies are slowly going to pop not only you know richie brothers but the women he kind of seduces and who you know pay for his sex and his attentions and i think seidel again deal, deals with those sexual encounters with great grace uh, and sensitivity you know they're not like i said they're not sex boys they're not exploiting their their grossness in a way you know we feel mm. their discomfort but these people are getting genuine pleasure from these kind of moments of um, intimacy and there's a great the most side-lific side moment of this film I think was a particular scene where he goes to he has a kind of regular client he goes to see this woman who's you know, 65 or whatever and they have this sex in this rented apartment it's very very small mm. the woman's mother who must be 80, 90 years old is in the next room <laughs> very very geriatric um, very geriatric kind of you know very withered you know pretty much just a corpse almost is yeah. what's implied and so they're they're you know they're making love sweetly in the next room and you know the, it turns out the mother is actually so at one point they they have a kind of failed erotic encounter he can't really get it up he leaves <laughs> and the girl the girl the woman goes into the next room and is comforted by her mother mm. and she sobs on her breast um, and but it's he also real can't really get it up because the mother is there there and yeah. and, and just, uh, cries out for help once mm. or twice so there's a, a sense of like tension between the mother and the daughter it's and like the, the suggestion of decay is suddenly mm. in the room yeah, 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 yeah. Own, death own, is yeah. stalking the halls uh, saps his virility which is otherwise pretty prodigious I mean yeah absolutely oh, he <laughs> he's a real shocker <laughs> <laughs> he, he <fucks. laughs> but also we should we should talk about 
how spectacular his performances are. And actually, oh, yeah, the, rend the, rend yeah. the renditions are just phenomenal and yeah. wonderfully uh, filmed and staged. And, and the lyrics all just feel totally appropriate. Emilio. They were this, uh, the ones that repeat oh, they were yeah, the yeah. themes. There's yeah. like a racial uh, a commentary on race mm. yeah. in one of the songs that kind of lands at exactly the right moment mm. in the song. Mm. Um, yes, there is. So my one reservation, which weirdly, there's nothing to effect about the film festival. I, 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 I don't know if either of you feel this, but there's a certain effect of uh, coming out of the cinema, one is very often captured by the last 10 minutes. Mm. More so than in other contexts, I feel my opinion of a film is it seems to be dominated by how it's ended. And, and that films, I would say as a filmmaker, ending a film is harder than beginning it. Um, and there is, in Rimini, there is a, quite a moving sort of uh, Winterizer scene with uh, the father of the, of the main character, played by Jean-Michel Roeberg. Um, R.I.P. actually, he died just after the film was finished. Yes, yeah. and it was shot in 2017, mm. weirdly, a very long time ago. Yeah. I can't, I can't oh. hear that number without thinking about Corbin. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, so um, the ending, I was, I was, there was uh, ending where the daughter, spoiler alert, the daughter um, who is dating a kind of migrant worker, uh, has brings in lots of refugees into the into the house. Sort of insists that a, a kind of debt is established, uh, financial but also emotional, between the, uh, uh, Richie and his daughter, uh, which makes him feel obliged to house all these. Uh, well, he's colonised, isn't basically. he? The, the frontier is returning yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I, I think maybe Owen as well felt this just went a little bit over the edge in terms of so, yeah. uh, credibility and um, sort of. Uh, I don't know, like insight, really. It just oh. it, it became a bit comical. Um, it the film trades in the farcical and the absurd during performances, I suppose. And then his 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 comportment as a character he has to hold on to this kind of cheerful, romantic yeah. schmoozer. And I think this is where the film kind of treads very heavily into the farcical. It becomes Oslandish, actually. It does a little bit the square, I suppose, as he kind of is then in, is is the kind but of. But their gradual arrival throughout these uh, desolate shots, mm. um, landscapes in which he's trundling from one uh, mm. uh, elderly appointment um, to another, um, through this series <laughs> of, <laughs> you know, of increasingly uh, uh, dialer ride, increasingly <laughs> increasingly <laughs> abject <laughs> dying resorts, but suddenly uh, the frame throughout about kind of like 15 minutes of the film mm. is more and more populated with these uh, silent refugees Just who sitting, and the yeah and uh, they become kind of props on the edge of the frame right mm. uh, and this really reminded me of um, the second part of uh, of Dumont's um Concern. Quine, but Quine, the extra humans. Right, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Where you suddenly have this incursion into these French seaside towns. Um, and it was something that he was criticized for this uh, by for instrumentalizing. I mean, well, no, more, but more for their silence, mm. right? For the fact that these are not um, participating. Parts silent of silent the black bodies, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I um, mean, I think. But I think it's in a. It, it gets to. Uh, it does get to something anyway about the perception in lots of European countries of the arrival of yeah. the sudden arrival. Yeah. But you have a reverse transgression yeah. in both cases because Dumont has a moment where a carpentier and the detective enter a migrant camp at one point. And Seidler's done this before. He does it with Paradise Love where mm. she goes from the kind of luxury resort, or not quite luxury resort, the four-star resort, into the kind of migrant camp at the edge. So there's these two moments of tra transgression where the kind of colonialism is reversed in a way and they're going into a space mm. where they are not welcome. And they feel the kind of ferocity of that, that a, their own alienation in those spaces where, they, you know, they've caused these spaces to exist and yet they're not fully welcome there. There's a certain, like, almost a, like meteorological feeling in Dumont. Like, a lot of the things that happen in, the ex in the both Cancan films, you know, the things landing from the air, well, uh, people right. appearing. Yeah, yeah. And so the, the appearance of the migrants feels It works like on this level as well because yeah. the al they're, they're appearing at the same time as the slime is appearing yeah, 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 at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. these kind of... Uh, alien incursions so the, so into the metaphor, the, the metaphor yeah. feels like weirdly disrupted. Even yeah. it's like obvious, but mm. also like kind of. Um, I well, don't I know. Mean, it's like just, every, it's like all the best features of his work, it has a an aspect of the supremely terrestrial and yeah. supremely mm. extraterrestrial. Absolutely, very well. Yeah. But, um, uh, whereas in, um, for some reason, in uh, Rimini, it just felt a little bit like a kind of invocation of, of politics too too directly um yeah it, it was it was a bit it was a bit kind of hectoring at that i point. think he's on like, slightly way, safer ground when he's uh when he's addressing that old chestnut of um 
of the, the long tail of Austrian culpability for the war. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but also Paradise, the, Paradise Love, I, I, I think is handles like it's not like Seidel can't do the colonial politics. Like, mm-hmm. but Paradise Love is like beautifully excruciating in its like in its mass in its awareness. Mm-hmm. Of of that topic, so I don't. Um, I'm not saying stay out of politics. I just think the way it works in there just is a bit crude, Too blatant. Mm-hmm. and it doesn't. Yeah. I would almost just like expand that section more and find out more about like him deciding to do that. I just it felt like it happened very yeah, quickly. Yeah, and, and so it's on step. the terrain of Richie's relationship to uh, his father mm. that yeah, I think we f- we find the more uh, um, effective uh, political canal in the film because. Yes. Uh, essentially, his father is um, is is Guga, and uh, at one point, uh, Richie actually uh, goes to find his pension book and, and rob him blind so that he can uh, pay yeah. his. Um but the irony is, is his father can't remember his password. Yeah. Of course, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's got dementia. But system. there's an extraordinary sequence when he's at the nursing home, kind of. We're going to have this with Bitcoin keys, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Five, seven, nine. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he's dutifully doing the rounds of the hallways of this uh, extraordinarily furnished space, actually, mm. which has all these um, decals of the Austrian countryside forests and, and mountains, forests yeah. on the walls. Yeah. And uh, his father starts to um, sing a Nazi song. Mm. Uh, over the top, um, Richie begins one of his renditions. Yeah, I'm worried. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to um, try and drown out and the so, Nazism. And so there... It Given there the context that, that of Schlago music, itself, yeah. which is this supreme distraction mechanism, uh, which helped to keep people's mind off what they'd just yeah. done, uh, is kind of literalized in a beautiful fashion. But the final scene in which, uh, um, as as the as his mind starts to sundown, Richie's father is in the home and puts on. Uh, uh, f- very famous uh, name now escapes me. Riser. Yeah. By oh. Schubert. Yeah. yeah. And it's gazes out the window and he begins to call for his mother. Because, I mean, there's multiple parental absences in this film, of course. Like, this is what's I found this just film. extraordinary. It was excellent. Filmmaking, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I will say one thing. I think it's telling that uh, he chose to, Seidel chose to mm-hmm. delay filming slightly originally because he was waiting for the fog. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was waiting for the weather. It wasn't oh, really? fo- sufficiently oh, wow. foggy, so the film was delayed. Because he, so I think I think the f- the fog is important. In it's not just that this is a decayed Kineta mm-hmm. style, um, you know, resort that's seen better days. Mm-hmm. It's that it's almost unmoored from any surrounding countryside. It's it's mm-hmm. literally just this 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 island in this uh, fog of war. Effectively, you know, we don't see any kind of establishment beyond these sharp, very you know linear uh, geometric like kind of Solaris, frames of buildings yeah. yeah you're lost completely in that yeah that patch of grass surrounded by yeah. the planet and that's amazing because it makes it feel both you know a, a it, it's completely conditioned by history this place mm-hmm. and yeah, but these sorts of ro- resorts it. do have that quality yeah, they I mean, do yeah like, have you spent any time in Blackpool <laughs> oh <laughs> like I have it, yeah. you know, not like that 